and welcome to the Talk Film Society podcast. Wow, uh, I am your host, Marcelo Pico, editor in chief of Talk Film Society. Uh, back at it again, tr- trying once again to have a weekly show on the Talk Film Society network. Uh, and and what better show to do it with than the one that's been around the longest? Um, I I don't know what the anniversary is, but it's like it, late August, early September is, is is when I started podcasting. Like what, like eight years ago, maybe. Who, who cares? But it's that time again, folks, where I decided to do a weekly show, and this is it. So first episode, I, I am like, who's going to be a great guest? It turns out I got the best guest for the first episode of this new run of the Talk Film Society podcast, right? And this new run, it's gonna, I'm going to try to do it weekly. going to try to get, you know, Talk Film Society regulars, special guests, fingers crossed, to talk about movies, mostly new releases, and also some old releases. We'll see how it goes. But this week, yeah, I went to the Discord. I'm like, who's going to be on this show for this first episode? And it turns out I did get the best guest. Somebody who I've podcasted with maybe the most out of anybody. It's Matt Curione. Hello, Matt. Hey, how the hell are you? I'm doing great. I mean... Uh, uh, it's, been a, it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. <laughs> um... I know we have to. I know we have to catch up on certain things, right, Matt? We do. Um, not just the podcast we do separately that we need to catch up on because we, you know, we also did. Hey, what you watching? You know, we we still got to bring that back. Um, and also Spielberg, thirty three, thirty three. Remember that? Still got to still got to catch up and do an episode on West Side Story. Um, uh, yeah, we'll be doing a, a double whammy, uh, two episodes when the Fablemans comes out. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 promise that right now, Fablemans. Yeah, um, we'll do a West Side Story and then we'll do the Fablemans. Oh, that. I mean, aren't you excited? I mean, why don't we just dive into it? I mean, of course, people know who Matt Curion is, right? I mean, Matt. That's me. It's you. <laughs> you know, it, it, whenever being somebody who I never podcast with, like maybe a special guest, I do have to like do like an intro for them. Because like, I'm like, but people who listen to this, they know who you are. Like, why even introduce Matt Curion on Talk from Society anymore? I mean, uh, I'm just some guy. Just some guy, right? <laughs> um, okay, so so guy. Um, I can't remember the last time we talked. It's been a while, like months we ago. said, months, months ago. ago. Yeah. But let's let's start generally because we have some topics to cover. I mean, first off, yeah. the the big one which we'll talk about here in a bit is Nope. Okay, we gotta nope. talk about Nope. Nope. Right. Um, and also, we also saw this weekend, uh, uh, not together, me and Matt, but separately, uh, Jaws. In our and, hearts. In our hearts. We saw it linked. Uh, Jaws in 3D, which I just saw yeah. a few hours ago. So we can talk about that, too. Um, and also National Cinema Day uh, yesterday, as of this recording. Anyway, topics. But let's start generally, okay? How was your summer, Matt? And when I say that, I want, like... Your your general feeling on just the summer you experienced, and also movies. Plus, how about the the, the uh, summer of twenty twenty two? Boy, uh, summer has been hellish and way too short. Yes, I can confirm those two things. Uh, living in Texas, me, uh, there were days that were weeks on end. We'd have above a hundred degree weather. Uh, Same. So yeah. So so thanks a lot, climate change and the environment falling apart but it was hot but hey that's what movies are for matt i mean did you did you go out to see a lot of movies this summer uh, i went to a few yeah yeah i did actually yeah shockingly enough because <laughs> okay we've had this long for me long back and forth about like going back to the movies because we're still in a pandemic yes, yes it's and you sure. know and, and there's been a, a new disease or virus that sprung up i think since the last time we talked matt right um (laughs) every week or so (laughs) every week or so there's something new that pops up um but of course people who know me and listen to the stuff i've done for the last like two or three years have realized like oh me i mean i'm not gonna wait around i'm i as soon as i felt safe to go to the movies i went but matt you had some hesitation um yes but but talk about like just your summer overall in, in theaters like and and how often you went it was the summer of IMAX for uh, Ooh. my husband and I, actually. Uh, we made the trip uh, about half an hour to go to the closest IMAX screen. Uh, we saw Top Gun Maverick in IMAX. We saw Nope in IMAX. We saw Jurassic World in IMAX. And 
It was a great summer for big movies, big screen. Love God, it. That sounds great. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know where to start <laughs> because Top Gun Maverick for me is for me like the summer. Per- movie. It's a perfect movie. It's, it's perfect. a perfect movie. Okay, I'm it really gonna, is. I'm gonna double check. I've seen how- it. I've watched it twice now. Okay, you've seen uh, it twice. It's quite good. I watched it once, obviously in IMAX, and then I, uh, you know, bought it on iTunes. <laughs> Yeah, well, I saw it. Hold on, I, I put up my letterbox. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five times in theaters, and Jesus. once, yeah, and once in uh, when I bought it here Hot on damn. iTunes. But I, I love the thing, and IMAX it's great. It, it, to see it on an IMAX screen was one of the highlights of uh, the year for me, because that boy seeing that on a big screen, yeah, it's a go- it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. It's it's, it's solid. a good movie. It's yeah. way better than it has any right to be, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I had my hesitation and uh, re- who doesn't? Re- I know. Remind me again your thoughts on on the first Top Gun because it's different for everybody. Like it's fun. It's fun, right? I okay. think it's fun. You think, I think it's, it's fun? I think it's a. I think it's a good movie. Yeah. I think Maverick is a great movie. Yeah, yeah. I okay for me it's tough because i i love tony scott so much that it does elevate top gun for me like if 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 tony hadn't directed it if scott hadn't directed it i would not like top gun as much yeah. as, I, as i do right so there's a lot of that there's a lot of that there but top gun maverick is a better movie like it's mm-hmm. without a doubt <laughs> uh, and and uh 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 Visually, I think it, it it almost does match up to Tony Scott's style in that first one. It's but, stunning. Uh, it it looks so, especially like the the scenes where Tom Cruise forced the actors to be in the cockpits. Of, uh, and not even just yeah, not even it's just not even just like a great movie. It's like a technical marvel. Yeah. Oh, uh, it yeah. It, I was amazing. watching the uh, behind the scenes and the way they got like eight cameras in a cockpit. That's insane. Ah. Uh. Oh, okay. I know. Uh, I know you've been busy. I think uh, uh, you, you you just watched a movie that we're going to discuss in a bit. <laughs> I did, but uh, it was my second time seeing that. Oh yeah, we'll talk about it in a bit. But before we move on and to that, and, and shockingly enough, it's still it's not. It, it might be my number one of the year. Oh, might not be. No. Oh, I. Uh, we'll, well, we'll have more to talk about that in a bit. But did you see the CinemaCon footage? Uh, yes, it's one of the uh, bonus features. No, oh, it is. I didn't. I didn't it's wait. It's one of the bonus features on uh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Wait. So okay. J- just so when he's on the airplane, see yeah. you at the movies. Yeah, we'll see it. Th- I didn't realize that was on the Top Gun Maverick bonus feature. It's one of the bonus features. It's like uh, it's uh, Dead Reckoning Part One CinemaCon footage. It's like the first bonus feature that pops up on the uh, Apple TV thing. Wow. Okay. So okay. It's pretty neat. This is great, uh, 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 and we should catch up people and like if they don't know what the fuck we're talking about but yeah <laughs> the uh, on twitter i saw that's where i first saw it and that's why i bring it up tonight because like uh, they there's a clip and if you don't know CinemaCon is when it's a yearly thing where cinema owners come uh, to like las vegas i think and then they and the, the and then the studios present their wares for the next year it's like here's what we yeah. have right so uh actors and directors shoot special introductions for like presentations yeah. or screenings right so it's pretty cool uh, for this one, uh, I, I and it was something I I, I read about when it happened because of course like it's insane uh, to even yeah. read about, but to see it now it's like even more insane. Like Tom, I'm losing daylight, Tom. Yeah, Tom Cruise <laughs> is hanging off like a a, pl- a a biplane, a biplane, right? Yeah, yeah. He's hanging off a biplane, talking to <laughs> the camera. Uh, I guess the camera's on another plane, right? Or yeah, a helicopter, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But. Tom Cruise is just talking to the camera, saying, "Hey, uh, uh, theater owners, like uh, we're here shooting Dead Reckoning, and like you're do- doing a great job, folks." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, like that's one thing. It's like, oh, that's insane. And then Christopher McQuarrie in another plane, like dips into frame <laughs> and goes, "Come on, Tom, we're shooting. Like we're, we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're, we're losing jet fuel, whatever." And it's like, oh, we're okay, losing so, daylight. Yeah, we got to shoot. Daylight. We got to shoot. <laughs> And Tom Cruise is like, all right, so <laughs> we got to go, folks. <laughs> and then and he's like, oh, now, and now stay tuned for uh, the trailer for Dead Reckoning. And then we're going to screen Top Gun Maverick. Goodbye, cinema owners. We'll see you at the movies. And then, like, both planes just, like, dip down, yeah. like, h- hundreds of feet. It's, it's insane. So, anyway, glad to know that's on the iTunes special features of Top oh, Gun the- Maverick. 
Top Gun Maverick is loaded with bonus features. Uh, it's got a whole, like I said, a whole thing about all the cameras they put into there. It has that hour-long conversation that uh, Cruz did at uh, Cannes. Uh, oh it was yeah, like a tribu- it was like a whole like career long like tribute to him, just running through his entire career. This oh. long, long, wide ranging interview. It's awesome. I watched that the other night. Okay, I I, I gotta check the this dude. Out. The dude just loves movies. Yeah. Okay, and, and I know we could talk about Tom Cruise forever, right? <laughs> but I, I'll just say you know a, a few more things, and then we'll move on. But again, like Top Gun Maverick, and I was trying to explain this to. Um, uh, a past and future guest of this show, Marcus Serving. I don't remember if it was on mic or off mic. It, it, it may have been for an episode of uh, Have a Nice Apocalypse. But I was talking about Tom Cruise and Top Gun Maverick, and Top Gun Maverick, it, it, it exceeds, it because r- rarely does this happen, it exceeds at being like an, an <laughs> not, it's not that like the director, uh, Joseph K- uh, Kaczynski, right? I do like yeah. the guy. But to me, this doesn't ring as like a Joseph Kaczynski joint. This reads as like a Tom Cruise movie. He right is he is the premier uh, auteur producer. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like that's Tom Cruise for you. Because it does feel like the same crew. Of course, like you know, Macquarie's a part of it. Like uh, from and like I think even the composer, maybe an editor, is like the same from uh, Mission Impossible Fallout. Like I, I can see Cruise mm-hmm. saying, "All right, guys, we just you know rolled on." Uh, Fallout. Now we're gonna do Top Gun Maverick. So let's so let's do yeah. that. And it does feel like he is creating his own. <laughs> like I, like 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 you said, he's an auto uh, auteur producer. So yeah. it's fascinating to see, and him being as old as he is now, and like being around for how many decades. Him now having like the the, the number one film of, of his career. Wow, insane. Yeah. Um, He's also an insane Scientologist, so don't forget that, folks. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like to think about that. I just I like know, to think about yeah. crazy dude love movie. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I, I had to top that with that, just in case anybody has anything to say about that. All right, but hey, something we can all agree on, at least like I've seen very few people not like this movie that we're going to talk about. All right, some would say it's the movie of the year, right, <laughs> Matt? It's close. <laughs> it's it's close. close for me. Nope. Let's talk about Nope. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yes. My what favorite mo- Jordan Peele film. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Jordan Peele and and Matt Curione. Because, hey. He's pretty good. <laughs> He's pretty, pretty good. We, uh, okay, let's, let's start at Get Out. Okay. Matt, your thoughts on Get Out? Amazing. Amazing, right? It's uh, one it's of great. the, one of like the most impressive debuts ever. Yeah. Ever. Like yeah, you absolutely. really can't, you can't top that thing. It's effective. Uh, it's it's terrifying. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, really good movie. Uh, I mean, I love it. I just uh, I'm I'm gonna echo everything you just said. Um, now, what's next? Us, Matt. What do you think about us? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> See, this is it. Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> I I I okay. The, I, there, there, are, there were a few people who I really wanted to know what they thought of Nope, right? <laughs> like right away. <laughs> yeah. And I was keeping an eye on your feed and like when you were watching Nope, and I was like, I want to know what he <laughs> thinks of Nope because, and I'm sure we talked about this on an episode of something, whatever. Like you were not a fan of us, and no. and I love that movie, and we just had our disagreement about that. Like let's wash our hands of that. But that that, that uh, big divide between you and I. Uh, with us, okay. Without a doubt. I loved it. You don't, okay. And I was like, I wonder how Mar- how Matt is going to feel about Nope because I, I was very, I was nervous. Yeah, uh, and, and I saw it a few days early, and I was like, oh, this. I, I just tell you how I feel, right? I was like, oh, like mm-hmm. first time seeing it, it's solid. It's it's funnier than like his last two movies. It's much more fun. Um, I didn't grasp. It is fun. I, I didn't grasp on like the 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 social commentary of it the first screening, but I've seen it three times now, and like by the third time, I'm like oh, like I, the 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 one subplot we'll talk about. It's like, uh, the 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 it it rattled my brain the first time I watched it, but then after seeing it again, it's like oh, I understand it now. Anyway, I came out of it like, oh, so good. And I was like, I wonder how Matt feels because yeah, <laughs> you, you were nervous. He said, but but talk about that first time seeing it totally blown away yeah 
completely blown away. Especially, especially when you know halfway through, I, I, it clicked. Or I was like, oh, this is Jaws. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is Jaws. Uh, d- that's 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 my note to studios: don't remake Jaws. <laughs> Just make movies that are like Jaws, and you will have a banger on your hand. Yeah, because I it, it, and and I guess now it's good. It's real good. I guess now is a good time to say for a few people, hey, we're gonna talk about Nope in depth. Uh, it's still playing in theaters. It's it's on VOD. Um, so check it out, folks. Uh, and skip ahead maybe ten minutes, and then we'll we'll, we'll move yeah. past Nope. But yeah, I, I I I'm with you. Like it clicked for me about halfway through too. I'm like, oh wait, this is this because. And you're like you're like oh he's Quint. I get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that guy, he's Hooper. Okay. I think I think uh, Universal, the studio who released it, uh, or whoever, like uh, it was came, Universal. Yeah. Well, no, I mean like whoever uh, uh, produced the uh, whoever cut the trailers. You know, whether it's Universal yeah. or like Jordan Peele or whoever cut the trailers, they did a great job of presenting this as like a more like uh, 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 you know, and not Shyamalan shine uh, signs, yeah. you know, movie or more like. Close Encounters, right? Which it does have. Yeah, I was sa- which it does have a similarity this, to, too, right? I was saying this earlier. The restraint on the marketing team to not use Michael Wincott's uh, Purple Peeper Leader <laughs> in, the, in the trailer is astounding, and you know that they wanted to, and I'm sure Peel was was like putting his foot down. Nope, you're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that a slow down Purple Peeper Leader oh, song <laughs> in amazing. the trailer. Amazing. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it's just that trailer would have everyone going, huh? What? <laughs> and also the trailer brilliantly, like not showing you the anything, the 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 uh, the uh, Gordy's whole thing. <laughs> that subplot. Gordy did nothing wrong. Gordy, okay. That part is what I was saying earlier. It's like that part, like really flummoxed me. It's like what, like what, like what. But then, yeah, after seeing it, and then after seeing it again, I'm like, oh, it, yeah, it sticks. Like, there's no, I can't see this movie working as well without without it the Gordy subplot without it because it goes all in all into the whole thing with uh, Jean Jacket. I mean, yeah, yeah, he he thought that you know I was able to tame Gordy, I can tame this thing, <laughs> a UFO. Um, <laughs> no, you can't. Uh-huh. And don't even try, because you just fed your whole family to it. Yeah. And you got what was coming to you, buddy. Oh, and, th- oh, that- and that sequence is, is, is amazing. Uh, Horrifying. Uh, uh, Stephen Yun's face, as he looks up and he, he's about to get sucked up. It Yeah, like... Uh, um... And Carlo noticed it when we watched it uh, tonight. Uh, when there, the camera is focused on his face, you can see the shadows behind him of the people getting sucked up. Oh, yeah. I noticed that like, yeah. the second time yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that's you know? crazy. <laughs> that's ah. a nice little touch. <laughs> that's incredible. Th- uh, this movie's great. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, the Jaws thing, to, to have it be that... <laughs> like, okay, again, spoilers, right? That moment in the movie... Where uh, Daniel uh, Kaluuya, uh, playing OJ, he's like, he's talking to his sister. He's like, it's territorial. It's like, it's, it's going to feed. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm like, that's, I was like, that's mm-hmm. the moment. It's like, oh, this is this. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. this is not, yep. this is not close encounters. This is not signs. This is something else yeah. completely. And it was. Also, yeah. also a brilliant touch is that uh, the ship itself is the creature. Yeah, which I uh, very very happy that there weren't you know little men that popped out of it. Oh, that 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 design of that. That said, yeah. That said, the scene when he's in the stables and those kids scare the shit out of him, that is effective even on a repeat viewing. Absolutely, like I, that is creepy. Yeah, because I, again, it, it goes back to the trailers being so smart in that like that's what you that's what you are expecting is like those little creatures you know in quotes. To be yeah. aliens, and that, and first yeah. time seeing it, yeah, um, and yeah. the entire audience I saw it with was like electric, like during that. Yeah, uh, but the uh, the design of uh, Jean Jacket is uh, creepy as hell. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, I, I again going back to <laughs> my husband uh, when we first saw it in IMAX, he turned to me and he goes, "That thing looks like it's from Evangelion." <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's and it's that's exactly what it is. It it looks like an angel from Evangelion that he put into his movie. Uh, because I don't know if people know this, Jordan Peele's a big old nerd. He's a nerd. Yeah. Between that character, that creature design, to the uh, Akira motorcycle slide. Oh yeah. <laughs> he, he wears his influences on his sleeve, and that sleeve looks nice. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe he he pulled that off. Having the Akira that, motorcycle that slide. That motorcycle. That motorcycle slide is a total fuck yeah moment. Yeah. In the movie. When I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, he did it. <laughs> uh, and by the way, uh, Kiki Palmer. It's badass. Like, it's she, badass. I love her in this movie. Kiki Palmer. Uh, like, somebody said online. She's like, terrific. Like, this is like her breakout. And it is. Like, yeah. Like, eh. yeah. I mean, I've seen her in things, sure. And I know her from the meme. Like, I don't know this man. Um, but yeah. <laughs> this like just shows her complete range as an, as an actress. Oh, yeah, no, she's great. Oh, she's like going, funny. She can do drama. Exactly. Anything. Yeah. Oh, so she and can dance. A complete, <laughs> a, a complete badass at the end. Oh, she's so good. Yeah. Um, like Daniel Kaluuya is is amazing in this. Like he's playing it in a way that's like very reserved, but yet like there's yeah. there are moments when like he does come out and like. Uh, I, I, he's great I, in it too. Yeah, he's so great. Um, who else? Uh, Brandon Pereira as Angel. Like he's <laughs> shot out of nowhere. Yeah, out of nowhere. This kid. <laughs> he's great. He's so good. And of course, we gotta talk about. We, we gotta spend more time on Michael Wincott. Okay. Oh my God, him popping up. Uh, let me tell you, it just makes me smile that when you look him up on IMDb, it's his character poster from Nope that uh, <laughs> is his uh, IMDb headshot now. Uh-huh. It's it's so good. He is terrific in this movie, and like no one has a voice like him. Yeah, and he doesn't do a lot of movies. Yeah, uh, but when he does, he's usually like the thing I remember most. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part, I mean, like watching it tonight, I'm like, he kind of like I kind of want to watch Alien Resurrection later because like he's great in that. He's yeah. he's terrific in that. He's great in that. He's great in the Crow. I I've always loved Michael Wincott. I think he's fan- fantastic. And yeah, he he kind of blew me away in this too. Yeah, and and you gotta imagine going back to Jordan Peele being a big nerd. It's like I'm sure he's like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna get the guy from Alien Resurrection to be in Nope. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. About that guy. <laughs> Love him and Love Wincott. He's yeah. fantastic in this movie. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jordan Peele, for that. Um, but 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 you, but you say it is close to being your number one, right? It's very close, and I mean, what might push it over the edge is that. How it's so focused on photography. Yeah, okay. And um, there is some really cool stuff to do with cameras in this movie. Uh, some rare film stock <laughs> yeah. that they use I, in the final moments of this movie that is really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I just so happened, because I, I, I figured we, we were going to talk about this. I did pull up an article that kind of that goes into how uh van hotema did the 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 day for night stuff which one of the the best photographers in the game absolutely like uh uh like my friend who i saw it with um the second time like uh, she she wrote down something and passed it to me and i i and, sh- and it said like this is shot day for night and i go what and i didn't say what in the middle of the movie i was like huh yeah <laughs> but but afterwards i'm like i didn't know that like i i seeing it for the second time up until that point, when like when she gave me that note, I had no idea it was day for night. It the the, the, yeah. the night scenes in this, they look they they look so beautiful, and I bought it. And yes, uh, they do. Oh my gosh! But yeah, but yeah, he he, he built a rig. It says here combining sixty five millimeter digital infrared information with Panavision system sixty five millimeter film information. What? <laughs> so. It's like he had a 3D rig and he had like infrared on one side and I think like just standard film on the other side. However, he did it using the like infrared technology. It's like the the, the day for night stuff is incredible. So and I uh, I can't wait to see what he does next because <laughs> like I'm now excited. Yeah. Like now he's like if there wasn't that before. Like yeah, like you were saying, he's one of the best. Uh, Van Van Hotima. Uh, um, I I sent you something uh, just now uh, on a DM, and it's the film that they use at the end to take a picture of Jean Jacket with that well camera. Oh, uh, that's Polaroid film that they're using. Polaroid film. 
That is Polaroid 8x10, which is extremely expensive and hard to get. <laughs> Jordan Peele must have bought out their stock, and I'm guessing that's why, uh, when they were shooting this movie, why you couldn't order it off their website, because it was out of stock because of Mr. Peele. Uh, <laughs> bravo, sir. <laughs> so thanks, buddy. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> yeah, that, that stuff is very, very expensive. Uh, you get, I think, eight shots for 190 10 shots and it's 190 dollars a pack holy crap yeah that's uh that's something else man <laughs> holy crap well I, but I, I noticed that as soon as she was turning the crank and those pictures were popping out it's like oh my god they actually use that <laughs> well i i'm mad man <laughs> i'm happy i have you on this to explain that to me because i had no idea that was <laughs> yeah that, that was a thing that's amazing that is large format Polaroid film. No, because uh, they make them out. I, I they make like one batch a year. Oh my god! And and we're and, yeah. And, and, and what's the size? Eight by ten, right? Eight by ten. Eight by ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 before you brought that up, like I would have I would have thought for, uh, you know, it's it's not a surprise to me that that's real because like you know why wouldn't there be eight by ten Polaroids? But. Yeah, if you if you were just said, oh, he made that up. There's no such thing as that. It's like I'm, yeah. I'd be okay with that too. But knowing it's a real thing, I'm even more surprised. And knowing, knowing it's a that, real thing, <laughs> um, oh, so good. So nope. I think I think I think that's all we need to say about nope. It's, right? It's it's like it's amazing. Like, like before I said uh, before I you know sidetracked everything. You were saying it's close to my number one of the year. That's right. It's close to your number one. So. And it might end up being my number one. I don't know. What can you say? What's like uh, number two, or like kind of creeping up to number one? Like what's what's giving Nope? Uh, well, run, run right now money? number right now no, uh, Nope is number two. Okay, what's number one? It's all about the king, baby. <laughs> Elvis. <laughs> all about Elvis, man. Uh, oh my god, movie that movie is, is, is I just insane. I just rewatched uh, it. I just rewatched because it dropped on HBO uh, the, uh, a few it's days insane. ago. But it's also really good. Yeah, I. It's hard and, to put into words just how. And Austin Butler is really good. Yeah, like I was talking to my mom about it, and she saw it before I did. But she goes, "Matt, you will forget it's an actor playing him." Yeah, yeah. Like that's how good he is. He totally disappears into the role, and you forget it's some guy named Austin Butler, and you think it's Elvis Presley. Like, that's how good he is. I mean, the whole movie's just a flex by Baz Luhrmann, like, yeah. showing, off his, showing off his style, but you know what? The guy flexes well. <laughs> <laughs> he does He does do that. I mean, I... So, if it, if it didn't Insane drop... Insane movie. <laughs> if, it, if it didn't drop on HBO, um, I would have gone to see it in the theaters again. Like, that's yeah. how, in my head... It is uh, Elvis, the movie, because those th- I saw spectacle, man. I, I've seen it twice in theaters, and I wanted to see it again. And I'm glad it's on HBO because, ah, uh, yeah, I I don't know what to say because like I, I, like I was saying before, it is a ridiculous movie. All right, yeah. El- Elvis and Nope are like two great movies about spectacle. Yeah, and Boz makes no like qualms about it. It's like this is spectacle, folks. But like, but like, yes. you said, I, I'm echoing what you're saying about Austin Butler. If there's any doubt, there's like some real acting brilliance. You know, uh, uh, sure, there's a bunch of style, but that one performance, He's great. Austin Butler, like that's what helps make the movie. It's like, like I never, I, I, I never thought that an Elvis impersonator would be a lock to be nominated for best actor. Yeah, but welcome to 2022, folks. <laughs> And, and 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 he definitely deserves to be nominated. Like I I haven't seen uh, Brendan Fraser's performance in The Whale, but apparently he's a front runner too. Um, and also I put Tom Cruise in the mix too. Oh, without a doubt. No, I really think that Cruise deserves a, a nomination for Top Gun. Yeah, yeah. But but Austin Butler, I mean, he should be in the conversation because he uh, to, for, for me for the movies I've seen up up till now, he's still my favorite uh, performance of the year in Elvis. Butler's. Um. Yes, for me too. At least I think. At least in the lead actor category, right? Like for for best actress, I'd say like Michelle Yao is still my favorite. Um, yeah, she's terrific. Yeah, but hey. even if I have even if I have cooled on that movie considerably, um, yeah. she is still phenomenal in that. I mean, I I love that like everybody loved that movie for like six months, right? But uh, but, yeah. but it, it's calmed down a bit. Uh, everything ever wrong uh, once. 
I, I, also, another one of my favorite uh, performances this year, if we're going to be talking about that. Yeah. Uh, Amber Midthunder. Oh, in yes. In Prey. In Prey. Oh. Uh, wow. Wow. What a what a great discovery she is. That She is so damn good in it. Ah, that movie is is solid, and I do feel, I, and I'm gonna just echo what I've been saying on Twitter, right? This is just like uh, Twitter, the show for me. Uh, it's <laughs> foolish that they didn't put it in theaters. That's what I was gonna say. Thank you, Matt. Especially, <laughs> especially in August when nothing else is. Yeah, out. yeah. God. What are you, what are you doing? That okay? Prey is like the perfect. Like I'm just gonna just go to see a movie on a Friday night, have fun. Yeah. You know, this looks cool. Yeah, and and you know, and instead I went to go see uh, Beast with Idris Elba, which was fine. But I kind of wish I had seen Prey. You know, in that August yeah. slot of like, there's nothing out. Why not put something? Yeah, there's fun nothing out? out. Yeah, there's nothing out. Yeah, so so why not put Prey or Beast or Fall? You know, put a lot of one-word titles <laughs> out there. Yes, <laughs> which but I, I did love. Prey. I, I love that movie. Prey. It's yeah. I I think it's cool as shit. Basically. Yeah. It's so good. Um, speaking of good, uh, why don't we take a break? Let's take our first break, okay? Sure. I mean, Matt, Matt, you're gonna stay on the line, right? You're, you're gonna you're gonna hang out for another thirty or so minutes, yeah. right? Right. And, and we'll yeah, talk about sure. more topics. Hey, we'll talk about Jaws in 3D. We'll, we'll we'll come back and talk Ooh. about that. Right. I got a great story about that too. All right. So hey, that's a sneak preview for the next segment. So folks, th- this is how the show is. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk some more. We're back. Whoa, what a break. Oh, yeah. We, we caught up, Matt and I, about life, about uh, shows we just watched or are watching. Yeah. Um, more on that in a bit. But for now, hey, yes. let's talk about Jaws yet again. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like uh, we talk about Jaws uh, almost every time we record together. Or it seems like. Uh, it's, it's close, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think we've talked about Jaws. Okay, last time we talked about Jaws was on a, on an episode of something, and we talked about because it it just came out in 4K back when we mm-hmm. talked about it last. And then of course before that we talked about it on the Spielberg show, and I'm sure we brought it up on Hey, what you watching a bunch? But hey, folks, numerous times. It's back though. It's back, baby. Jaws is yeah. back again, and this time in 3D and IMAX. And IMAX. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, I saw it in 3D today. Matt, I believe you saw it in 3D uh, yesterday. Night. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for National Cinema Day. Yep. Um, Bless those $3 tickets. <laughs> uh, see, okay, I- I'll say this up front. I did not partake in National Cinema Day. It just, Shocking. It did, I know. I know. It didn't work out. Um, kind of weird. Kind of weird that you didn't. Uh, yeah. Me being me. I-, I did tweet out that morning. I go... Every day for me is National Cinema Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, got like one retweet, so thanks, guys. Uh, but I I did make up for it by watching two movies today, though. Um, there you go. One of them being in theaters, I mean. Two movies in theaters. One of them being Jaws in 3D. The other in theaters I saw uh, was A Giant starring Rock Hudson, Ooh, James I, Dean. I need to watch that. I just got the 4K. I should throw oh, it on sometime. Oh. Uh, uh, they they presented that new 4K uh, um, uh, master uh, restoration. The restoration. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, when you play it, I hope you get the same little card in the beginning as I did that said uh, restored by. Um, I forget the first name. I think it's like the director's son, uh, mm. and then Martin Scorsese and Steven Spielberg. So <laughs> <laughs> that was nice seeing. Like, uh, of course, I love those guys. Yeah, of course, Scorsese. Scors- 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 uh, I can't say it. Of course, Scorsese and Spielberg are going to help restore like one of the yeah. best movies ever. Because Giant. Yeah. My quick review of Giant. It looks great. Incredible. Um, this is my second James Dean movie uh, I watched. I just watched Rebel Without a Cause a few days ago, actually, for the, the first time. Giant will probably be my first James Dean. Yeah, but I- I'll just say about Giant. Okay, first off, amazing. Uh, I I'm I I want to give it five out of five. You know, if we're talking ratings, that's how great Just I thought it. it was. I yeah. I know I'm always scared to do it, Matt. I I don't know why. I I, I I'm afraid. I gave, I gave I gave Jaws five. Yeah, well, of course, but Jaws is Jaws. Jaws I've seen so many times. Jaws remains a five out of five. But I just saw Giant for the first time, and I kind of want to say, yeah, it's perfect. I, yeah. I I rarely have that feeling where I go that movie. 
with it being like three and a half hours long, I was just captivated from start to finish. I don't think any – and well, okay. I don't want to get too far into it because you can't get too far into Giant. But I'll just say incredible um, and uh, great watching that. And then – I see another five out of five movie right after that, Jaws in 3D, yeah. uh, which I can't remember the last time I saw Jaws in a theater. Might have been maybe f- three or four years ago, but I just saw I this. I saw it. I've seen it projected numerous times. I'm going to pull up this my was, box. This was probably the second or third time I've seen it in a theater. I saw it for one of the anniversaries a couple years ago. Yeah. And then I go to the at the uh, the beach by here they play jaws on the beach every summer and i try to make it out there Ooh, nice nice it's uh, cool it's cool watching that uh, like on the beach it's pretty pretty dope yeah i i never part uh, uh here in austin the draft house used to have um i'm surprised it didn't have it this summer but they they had jaws on the water uh, uh, yeah yeah i've heard about yeah this. yeah where they project it you know on on a, on a beach and have people floating in inner tube yeah. watching the movie on the, on the screen <laughs> out there and and um apparently i never been uh i i, I was only at one of these screenings for the meg they did the meg okay. on the water which was fun <laughs> of course but i never saw jaws on the water but apparently for jaws on the water there were people <laughs> first off like there are fireworks that went off at the end of the movie like of course okay when, that's when, fun. when brody shoots the tank yeah, fire, yeah, yeah fireworks cool. go off right that's cool but also <laughs> that's fun maybe the best thing is like somebody and maybe maybe best uh, uh you know on what side you're on but a scuba guy is underwater and apparently pulls on legs of people Fuck watching off. the movie <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Oh, but that's hilarious to me. That too. uh, (laughs) Yes, what you call hilarious. I I know. Terrifying. (laughs) Exactly. And Um, uh, no thanks. Yeah. But hey, anyway, we saw Jaws in 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 another dimension. Okay, in three D. I and 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 you know what? Not bad. Fantastic conversion. Not bad. Yeah, I I I agree. I remember seeing Jurassic Park in 3D when they put that out years ago, and that was oh, yeah. a great conversion as well. And they don't mess around with Spielberg movies when they convert them to 3D. Apparently, oh no, especially this, this thing. One. This thing pops when it should. Uh, it's it's got that cool 3D effect where, like, when the water goes over the lens of the camera, yeah. it's basically sh- into the audience. Uh, that vertigo shot of Chief Brody when he's sitting on the beach and the Kittner boy is being eaten. Holy crap. Oh, amazing. <laughs> that, is, that is great, great stuff. And it wasn't dark. It wasn't dim. Like, it was projected well. And, uh, yeah, bravo. Good stuff. Uh, can I ask what uh, chain of theater you, uh, you saw this in? Or, yeah. A- what? Apparently, the people that work at the AMC I go to give a shit. Yeah. Because I've never had any trouble. <laughs> and it, that's the thing. And you and I agree on this because I, at my local AMC, things are going fine. But I, I, rec- yeah. I, I recognize other people's hatred of AMC or other chain theaters, right? But, hey, I like that. Well, I say that, but, like, sometimes... I, I don't think I've told this story on a podcast. But at the AMC I always go to, I went to a special screening, special, in quotes, of Moon, no. of Moonfall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like uh, the the Wednesday before it came out. It was like an AMC special investor screening, right? They have that bullshit like uh-huh. for investors. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm sitting a, a seat apart from somebody who decides, like a minute into the movie, to pull out their cell phone and just Ugh. start scrolling. And I go, and I I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for uh, at least a minute or two to see if they put, they put it away, if this is going to be an issue. Nope. They kept on going. Of and course. what I did, it was like, and I, I rarely do this, I go, excuse me, could you turn that off, please? <laughs> I had to be verbal, right? <laughs> and she just goes, she, I don't think she responded. Like, she was just like, eh. She just was ignoring me. So what do I do next, Matt? <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know. You grab an usher. Well, I should have done that, but... Well, okay, and a, a reason why I didn't do that, and I, I just don't want to bother these people who work there who are just like, just kids working, or like, just, they, they don't want to, I don't want to create like a scene, right? I, I yeah. Kinda, I kind of want to just take care of this on my own if I can, if not, I'll just move away. 
I eventually just moved <laughs> because Jesus. after she didn't put the phone away, I I had the brain idea of going, well, maybe if I shine, a, shine my flashlight in her face. <laughs> 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 so that's what I did. I turned on my phone's flashlight and just shined it on her. I go, hey, turn it off. <laughs> And of, Jesus. Course, and of course, she just ignores me again and goes, excuse me, leave me alone. But she, she doesn't put it away. So I just moved out of that. I, 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 that was like the worst experience I've had with somebody just being so disrespectful. Yeah. And it was at AMC, but that just, it doesn't happen too often there. Like, it doesn't, it's not that bad most of the time. Every once in a while, I get a really good audience. Yeah. And luckily for Jaws, I had a great audience. So for Jaws, you had a great audience. You were saying oh to me, God. or you were saying uh, before we went to the break... They had a good story, right, about your Jaws oh 3D experience. My goodness, uh, it's a great movie. Everyone knows yeah. that, but great movies can be made even better with the right crowd. Yes, and I had three teenage girls sitting next to me. Okay, yeah, had clearly never seen this movie before. Wow, and they were super into it. Oh, they, that's amazing! Like, like. The, the girl next to me was covering her eyes during the shark attacks. When Beg Gardner's head pops up, she screamed. Uh, <laughs> they were they were laughing at all the right jokes and just like just every point in this movie that's supposed to hit with an audience, it hit with these these three girls and it made the experience of the movie so much better. And to see a movie like this that you know, you and I, we've seen this we don't even know how many times. Uh, but to yeah, but to see it with someone who has never seen it, and just to like see how into the movie they are, that's the hallmark of a great movie. Uh, they really did enhance my experience. So, ladies, wherever you are, you're probably not listening to this, but thank you, I thank you, for, I thank you for that. I mean, and they were even like, they were worried about Hooper at the end. Yeah, that oh. like like when he when he. When uh, after the shark blows up, which they cheered at, by the way, which was awesome. Oh, amazing. Uh, the rest of the crowd cheered, too. But the girl, girl, she goes, what about Hooper? Is he okay? Is he okay? And he pops up and she goes, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's, it was uh, so good. It was great. That's amazing. That's, that's a perfect that's experience. The, that's the magic of movies, That's Marcello. the magic of movies. Like that's that's why you go to the movies, okay? Yeah, yeah. I, I good love that. times. Yeah, I, okay. good times. So my uh, theater experience watching it now. Yeah, I mean, I love it. Still love it. One of my top five movies of all time. Three um, D, great. But yeah, I uh, mine wasn't a packed crowd, but there okay, was. My theater, my theater was sold out. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, of course, you went yesterday for National Cinema Day, three dollars tickets. Night. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went today. So, uh, oh, by the way, I was reading a Deadline article before this, and I wanted to sound smart, so I'll just say, <laughs> uh, uh, Cinema Day, uh, uh, National Cinema Day was a success, apparently, because... Good, and it should happen every year. Yeah, because uh, uh, they, because there, there were no, like, huge releases for Labor Day weekend, they, they thought of this idea. It's like, let's try to maintain... Uh, uh, theater going, so they did. Yeah. They, they 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 successfully kept theater attendance the same as it was last week, which was yeah. like it was what they wanted. Because like if if they didn't have Cinema Day, what I mean, what were people going to do on Labor Day with new movies to watch, right? So thank you, yeah. Cinema Day, for helping save cinema. Uh, I didn't go. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> <laughs> but the screening I went to today. Uh, there was like yeah, maybe like eight people in the crowd, but I could tell, like somebody a few rows behind me, they're watching this for the first time, and yep. I yep. could I could hear their little like inhales or like little murmuring at certain parts. It's like that was cool to listen to too. Like yeah, even better, even better. No one laughed at the shark. Yeah, yeah, which because, is because that thing is still effective. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, sometimes living in Austin. I do no one with. laughed at the shark. Everyone gave out the appropriate aw when uh, Brody and his son are mimicking each, mimicking each other. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everyone's like, aw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's cute. It is cute. But hey, I mean, what what can we say about Jaws that we haven't already said? It's perfect. Oh, uh, oh the, I see, I see the laughter, thing. though, Marcelo, the laughter at some of the jokes in Jaws, the, the hearty chuckle that 
almost the entire crowd let out when uh, when his wife says, "Do you want to get drunk and fool around?" <laughs> <laughs> It was great. It was great. And another thing about seeing Jaws with a crowd, it's it's awesome when you see like parents bring in their kids. Yes. And it's clearly their little kids first time and then like you hear them talking on the way out and you know the little kids are like that was so fun. Yeah. Yes. Oh. It is fun. <laughs> thank thank you. Uh, it's that's so great. Let's It's a movie that endures for a reason. Yeah. It, it's still so goddamn entertaining after all this time. Uh, and we're not the only ones who saw it, Marcelo. Uh, my, uh, I got a text from my mom that day because oh. she went and she went to go see it in IMAX. Wow! And uh, she she texted me. She's like, "It's still great. Still makes me jump." <laughs> oh, so yeah. Uh, later that later that night, I saw a Facebook post from uh, my boss saying, uh, "Took took the wife and kid to go see Jaws tonight in in in, in IMAX." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, everyone went to go see this movie that's so that's great to hear i i, yeah, I it's awesome if anything spielberg uh hey he's at it again look at him putting putting butts look at in him seats go. <laughs> so, look at that kid go after almost 50 years by the way i thought about that today i was like oh Ugh. in three years jaws will be 50 <laughs> years old <laughs> wow and shut up <laughs> shut up i don't want to hear it oh i i also want to mention one thing about the 3d like right off the bat seeing a spoober they movie showed that 3D. avatar trailer <laughs> oh yes i saw that trailer too uh, uh which was great to see in 3d for the, like, oh, the restoration yeah it's 2000 remaster, yeah it's 2009 all over again 2009 uh, <laughs> baby <laughs> and and uh, they also showed a trailer in 3d uh, at least for me they showed a uh, black panther too they showed Same. that trailer yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go um, Which uh, I was very worried about, obviously, yeah. going in. But now that I've seen the trailer and I know what I know, yes, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I I have a good feeling. I I I had Namor this... looks cool, Marcelo. Yeah, I I had doubts. I think we all did. But yeah, after that trailer, oof, it looks amazing. Yeah, um, impressive. I was gonna say the three D watching a Spielberg movie in three D, it just shows once again he's like maybe the best to ever do it or one of the best he he knows what he's doing because like just simple shots like of like brody talking to his wife like in the first five minutes of the movie mm-hmm. it's like there's like this perspective of like he's in the foreground yeah. she's in the in, in the back and seeing that little scene in 3d even makes my uh, my my yeah. my mind tingle and that's he's all about depth of field he th- always has exactly it. and and, and he, this movie in 3d points and that framing out. yeah and framing. <laughs> yeah Oh. He knows what to do. Like yeah. he, like he just knows how movies. I know. I, I know. I'm going to sound like a jerk, but he knows how movies should look. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I think we should do a Spielberg podcast. I think we should do one. I think we did one. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Oh, wait a second. <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> crazy, right? Uh, speaking of crazy, yeah, Jaws. It's still so still great. great. Still, still one of the. It is the summer blockbuster. Yeah. What? A, what a perfect way to end the summer. With this, with what this a perfect movie. bookend for the summer! Uh, because Carlo and I, we watched it on July Fourth, and you know we watched it Labor Day weekend. So hey, same same with me. I saw this uh, when I was visiting my parents. Uh, my dad, yeah. my dad sat in and watched some of it with me, and uh, seeing it again, even then, was like fantastic. And seeing, I'm, I'm it's like, great. I'm like, of course I'll see it again. Like now, yeah. why not? It's one of my yeah. favorites. It's it's one of my mom's oh. favorite movies. It's my boss's favorite movie. I mean, in my contacts on my phone, like my boss's photo is Quint. <laughs> That's brilliant. I, I I should also say, like, I did see it in 3D. Um, I do want to see it again, Jaws, in IMAX. Because, I mean, of course, it's IMAX. And here in Austin, it's the Bob Bullock IMAX. That's, like, the, okay. the, the biggest and has, like, laser projection. Um, yeah, our closest IMAX is, like I said, half an hour away. It's the AMC uh, Mammoth and... It is gorgeous. I've seen yeah. so many great movies. I saw my summer of IMAX here, and then I saw a couple years ago, uh, my buddy and I saw 2001, the yeah. new restoration for that in IMAX. We saw uh, the Apocalypse Now in oh, IMAX, yeah. which that was a total bucket list thing, seeing that. Oh, oh man. God. But I, I, I was going to say I want to see it there for Jaws because it's going to be big and great. And also, I did see E.T. there at the IMAX screen okay. a few weeks ago. During, uh, see, I missed that. I missed that. Uh, but I, 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 I've seen that before. I actually saw it for the, for the uh, anniversary 10 years ago here in town in Austin. Same, that's, I saw it for that, yeah. 
Yeah, and I uh, they they projected it in thirty five millimeter, and I thought back then, and I, and even more so now, like those last like ten minutes of ET. It's a great movie. Seeing that on the big screen screen alone, mm-hmm. oh Jesus, God, the 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 odd the that soundtrack, is- everything, the everything works in those last. ET is great. It is great. E.T. Also, e. 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 also has one of the funniest sequences in Spielberg's career, which is Drunken Elliot yeah, and Drunken yeah. E.T. That is hilarious. <laughs> B- before we move off of E.T., I, I, I mean, of course, I think it's a fantastic movie and everything, but I still am weirded out by E.T. itself. <laughs> oh, I, he's a weird little dude. He's, he's just a weird, a weird guy. little dude being a weird little guy. Yeah. But I love and, him. He's, and, he's like, he's oddly cute. Yeah, okay, it's of course. Weird. Like he is oddly cute, but he does freak me out and I'm reminded yet again that as a kid I was terrified of dead ET or like that ET who's like uh, who wasn't. <laughs> that that was horrifying who to me us? as a kid. Who among <laughs> us? A dead ET in a ditch? Like Jesus Christ, that's like the most horrific image. <laughs> Uh, other than oh, and by the way, I, I I sat kind of next to people who were watching it for the first time. Oh no no no! Wait, I take that back. They were watching it for the first time. Maybe somebody in their group was, but somebody did say like, "Oh, I've seen this like so many times." I could hear, and they were like kids, and like kids like love ET, and and my nieces and nephews were also like big into ET a few years ago. I don't know if you know this, but that that Spielberg, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. ET. Uh, lives on. So does Jaws. Uh, I mean, come on. And then we'll go, we're, we're going to talk about Indiana Jones. I mean, pretty soon too. He's going to have another soon. resurgence. Uh, we'll talk God, about. God, I can't wait for Indiana Jones Five. I mean, we'll be, we're probably going to get a teaser next week. Oh, you think so? Because that that D twelve. Oh, thing is that's happening? right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, the Disney conference. So we're probably going to get a teaser at least. Interesting. That'll be something yeah, fun I to mean, talk about next week. I mean, week. John Williams just. Re, uh, uh, premiered music from it, so Ooh, yeah, it's okay, happening. Okay, now now I'm excited. He, I'm excited. Yeah, he premiered music in a uh, concert he did the other night. Ooh, okay. he did like, a new theme from the new indie, which is uh, pretty cool. Oh, I I am excited because uh, I love Mangold. I do. Uh, I, I, I honestly, I, he hasn't let me down yet. I love that guy. The only one of his that I have like a problem with, at least the ones I've seen, is his first Wolverine movie, The Wolverine. I, I wasn't a big That's fan. So of that gorgeous. One. I, I'm not a big fan of it. I I can't. How long has it been since you've seen it? Uh, Most I, notably, the the unrated cut. Hold on, I can tell you right now, and I'm pretty sure I own the unrated cut because I I remember buying the fancy packaging from Targets that had all the all the discs mm. and whatnot. But I, I I believe I've only seen it twice. The Wolverine. Yeah, I've seen it twice, and the last last time I saw it was December nineteenth, twenty thirteen. Wow! <laughs> so wow. it's been very many years. Maybe I should give it yeah, a, a rewatch. I watch that movie a lot, man. It's uh, freaking awesome. All right, all right, fine. But uh, hey, Mango. I mean, he just uh, uh, what was the last one he did? Uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Ford. Also very good. That, I love that movie. I think it's very good. Um, the movie was loud. That's yeah, a loud one. Loud movie. <laughs> Speaking of loud. Uh, we're loud about the last thing we're going to talk about, I think, yes. on this episode. I think you know what it is, Matt, because it's the one thing we have left to discuss. Yes. A little show called Better Call Saul. Ah! Okay, we're going to... And and this is like... Bravo! This is something that Matt brought up, and I was like, of course. Of course we're going to talk Better Call Saul. We have to. We, we have, have to. to. Because, okay, so on the Discord, I started a TV chat room discord yes. string whatever it's, it's called anyway <laughs> um and i mentioned that i was i i was re- i was re-watching breaking bad and watching better call saw or just finishing up better call saw and of course matt who who i've seen on twitter be very better call saw uh, uh posting you know posts about better call saw i i know you're watching it too and you were mm-hmm. saying you're watching it but now okay i i, I just finished it I just finished the I entire finished show it. this morning. I finished it Friday morning. Yeah, so we just finished rewatching Better Call yeah. Saul. And yeah, I started watching it basically the day after it, it ended. <laughs> yeah, and we're not going to get into spoilers, folks. So don't worry. I just wanted to have like a general discussion of, a discussion of the show because uh, I, I've been obsessed with Better Call Saul uh, for the better part of two weeks now because I've watched the entire <laughs> series uh, from, from beginning to end. And before that, Right before watching Better Call Saul, I did rewatch all of 
Breaking Bad and El Camino. That that was in the middle there. But, I still need to see that. That's the only oh, thing I haven't seen. Matt, you gotta see. Oh, yeah, I know. I you know, gotta. I know. Okay, because okay. As soon as I'm done with Breaking Bad, I'm gonna obviously. Yeah, do that because okay, because watching Breaking Bad, then watching El Camino, and then watching Better Call Saul. Well, I mean, you're not you're not gonna be watch Better Call Saul because you already did that. You're you're, you're just gonna watch Better, uh, yeah, Breaking yeah. Bad and El Camino. But I'll just say El yeah. Camino. It, it, those three things: Better Call Saul, El Camino, and Breaking Bad. Like each, like uh, it really takes care of their lead character, because I can't mm-hmm. imagine not thinking of El Camino now because it takes care of Jesse so well. That's all. That's mm-hmm. all I say. Or at least it handles the character in a way that I felt like was right. Right. Yeah. So that's a big thing about El Camino. And of course, Breaking Bad is about you know Walt and his shit. But Better Call Saul, his shit. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Okay, I I did I did bring this up with Marcus on a show recently. During my during my Breaking Bad, he's a dick. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Matt. During my Breaking Bad rewatch, I I it was at the end. He's an asshole. Yeah, I, I think the beginning of that last season, I was like, I hate his smug face. I hate Walt. He's a dick. Like, and when ugh. and it, I I guess this is spoilers, but when he showed up in Better Call Saul, I was like, I don't miss this asshole. Yeah. Yeah, and because yeah, he was he he's, he's so mean to Jesse. Yeah, he's so mean. It's just like be nice for like a day. <laughs> it's not gonna hurt you. <laughs> so we just want to make it clear, Walt, not a great guy. I, I I did say I did compare like the there's that fandom that like still hates Skyler. Uh, which is insane. Oh, they're all to me. horrible. Yeah, they're stupid, dumb people. And I, I compared them to the people who don't understand Fight Club and take away the wrong things from that <clears> movie, right? Um, and also, I, I said this to Marcus, uh, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. I think Hank on a rewatch uh, is like fantastic. He's a, he, he might be the hero of the whole thing. Okay, Hank rules. Hank, <laughs> and I think he does give one of the best lines uh, of the show ever in uh, Osmandius. Uh, I'm not gonna say what the line is, but for those who know, they'll know. But like, he has a great moment in that, and it just caps off like my thoughts of like, oh, I guess like first time watch, like yeah, you don't think much of Hank in particular, or even like uh, uh, his wife uh, Marie. But then on a rewatch, uh, especially with how uh, 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 somebody's handled in, like towards the end of Better Call Saul, I just say like th- these mm-hmm. characters rewatching Breaking Bad and watching Better Call Saul. I love how they just pop in and out, and you just change your perspective on a lot of these people. Yeah, and too. like with Better Call Saul, there's just and there's not a bad performance in the bunch. No, no. Uh, Ray Seahorn is amazing yeah. as Kim. Yeah, like I love her so much. Uh, I love her. Uh, Patrick Fabian's uh, Howard Hamlin is really good. I mean, sure, he's the butt of a lot of jokes, but like he gives a really good performance there. Yeah, um, Michael McKean. I didn't. I didn't know he had it in him. Yeah, he is. I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, and we both agree he is one of the all-time TV villains. Absolutely. I I, I felt the way that like um, fuck Chuck. <laughs> yeah, Chuck sucks. But when when they first cast Bob Odenkirk, like uh, uh, for for Saul, like in Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. or not, you know, when I saw him on the show. Yeah, yeah. At that point, like he was still, like not, he was still the, he was still the comedian, Bob Odenkirk. Yes. He was still like a funny yes. guy, and like I didn't, I, I of course I and, knew. And he yes, was great. he's and yes and yes he's funny in Better Call Saul, but he also gives like one of the best dramatic performances I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's what's getting at. Like he, through the course of like Better Call Saul, and like and then especially at the very end, the whole thing. I mean. Like he shows, like he's an amazing actor, but uh, that's, range. That, that's what I thought about Michael Keaton. Like you know, you know uh, same with Odekirk. It's like, oh, McKean, I know he's like a funny guy, but I've never seen him be like this amazing. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of like being a dramatic actor yeah. too. And for for me, I mean, he'll always be Mister Green, but like, <laughs> but now he's Chuck. Like, uh, oh, he's so good, so, so good. Um, but. I, I, but okay, so but I, even, I even love I even love how they expand on uh, Giancarlo uh, uh, Gus. Yes, they oh. re like like in in the original in Breaking Bad, he was great. He was intimidating, but you always wanted to know a little more. 
But in this, you learn more, but you don't learn too much. Which exactly, is the smart thing. Yeah. Again, not to spoil like the the ending of the show, but I'll just say like that final season with like uh, Jean Carlos Esposito in it uh, playing Gus. Mm-hmm. It's like, of course, it's a prequel. Of course, like he's not gonna, <laughs> you know, his fate. He's not gonna die here. He'll die later. Yeah. But they end his arc in such a an amazing way where like you said mm-hmm. they give you enough but not a lot and he still remains sort yeah. of a mystery but you get more of a sense of where he's coming mm-hmm. from yeah it's that little moment i think you know what i'm talking about like his final moments in like at the, the bar series. yeah at the bar perfect i thought Ugh. that was perfect um, honestly yeah devastating exactly yeah <laughs> he'll uh, never love again no never love again um it's horrible jonathan banks as mike like that's that, <laughs> that I, so good. Another great thing about this series is like I I I already know like Jonathan Banks is amazing, you know, and as Mike, fantastic. I was just watching. Speaking of El Camino, back like before we recorded on Net, on Netflix, there's like a behind the scenes uh, mm-hmm. uh, thing on El Camino, like the making of El Camino. Okay, and uh, Jonathan Banks does like an interview, and of course he's out he's out of character. And he talks like a normal person. He doesn't talk like Mike. I know, <laughs> right? In real uh, life, <laughs> if you really, if you really want to laugh, uh, check out the Better Call Saul blooper reels on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he is very funny as well. Oh god, very but, out of character. But he gives such a great performance in this. And 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 I uh, did you see? There's like a video. It was maybe from a few years ago. But there was like a Breaking Bad reunion. And Banks, I need to watch that. I yeah, need and, to watch that. And Banks, there's a clip that that was like circulating. Of like Banks talking about like how grateful he is and how he works with like the best people and he starts like crying. Yeah. Oh, he's so sweet. That that Jonathan Banks he's is, great. A, is a sweet guy. He's great. But as Mike Ermatrout, oh, an amazing again, I love how Better Call Saul handles like these characters like you already know. Mm-hmm. Like you know their fates. Yeah. But, yeah. Like you're not bored by like, oh, we know this person's not like, at all. Like, like we know that this bad's gonna happen to them now, but yeah. you're you still like so. But you never know. You never know. Like you're you're still so entrenched. You're still so fascinated with like these characters, especially with Mike. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, what else can we say about Better Call Saul? Uh, the, the, those last few episodes, uh, where they're mostly shot in black and white, that uh, next level. That may be some of the best TV direction mm-hmm. I've seen ever. Like those last few yeah. episodes. And yeah. and this and, oh, go ahead. The show really is terrific. Like I haven't been this engrossed in fictional characters' lives uh, in a long, long time. Yeah. I I cheered when something really good happens. Uh, when there's a shocking scene uh, in the last season uh, that I screamed uh, <laughs> when yeah. it happened. Yeah. Because I did not see that coming. Yeah. And I was just as terrified as the characters in the scene were. Yeah. Ugh. I know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, that was brutal, too. It, uh, it, it does... It, for me, it does really pick up in that last season. I think the last two seasons are the, the best two seasons of Better Call Saul. I like it. I, I don't think there are bad seasons, honestly. No. I I really love season three. Yeah. yeah season, season three season three's, is... Solid. Season three is really good uh, with the whole the whole thing with Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when when Kim crashes her car, yeah, that's another scene that scared the shit out of me. Oh yeah, <laughs> that- I was I was saying I was saying this last night, but like I have crashed a car like that. Yeah, uh, passing out, and they shot it how it feels. Oh wow! Like that, they edited it the way it feels when it's happening to you, like. You're you're driving along, everything's fine, and the next thing you know, bam, and you Jesus, just wake up yeah. like like this yeah, must being, have yeah like a lot of the situations in this show. Yes, it's all heightened, but they were definitely taken from people's lives that like they knew. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean the, the Jimmy Chuck dynamic feels way too real. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Because I it feels way too real. Yeah, uh, I that 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 familiar connection between like a brother or like a sister, mm-hmm. even like, like siblings. I feel that. Yeah, like, and it's tragic. Uh, yeah, you know, again, not to give it all all of it away, but like uh, Bob Odenkirk's like you know Jimmy slash Saul, like 
he does love his brother, but hey, his yeah. brother is an asshole. <laughs> like, yeah, and and so much so that like it destroys like both of their lives at one point, and it, 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 because like they're constantly at each other, but yet there's that love that you yeah that there has to be between two brothers. It's it's a fascinating dynamic, which it, it does feel real, like you said. It feels very real. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Better Call Saul. Hey, check it out, folks. Uh, we're, we're, it's great. We're just more. Uh, and hey, uh, 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 I mean, of course you can listen to us, or we'll just listen to the Emmys uh, next week when they're going to announce that, like, you know, it, uh, it doesn't win anything. <laughs> I again, really, I, I, I again, mean, I know. I want it to win. I think. I think Bob Odenkirk's going to win this year. I've, okay, here's the thing. Here's why I think Bob Odenkirk's going to win. Yeah, and it's cyni- it's totally cynical. I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. It's the heart attack. Yeah, that's what it is. It, it, uh, and and also he it's so it sounds so fucking cynical. I know, but, but it, it, he's gonna get that sympathy vote. <laughs> yeah, and if, and he also like released like a, a, a his autobiography too. Like he's which I need to read. Yeah, w- which I hear is amazing. But uh, yeah, of course he had a heart attack. Of course he almost died. You know, and the- also insane to me that this is the first time Seahorn's been nominated. Yeah. So what? I- I, what? I, I hope some of the goodwill that is going to go to Bob Odenkirk if he wins goes to also Seahorn. That'd be you know? nice. That'd be nice. Why also, not? I'm, I said how good he is before, but I'm shocked Fabian was never nominated. Yeah. No. That's that doesn't seem right to me because like he, he no it doesn't seem right does it <laughs> no it doesn't because <laughs> because him as Ham, Hamlin I love that character because he's he's just so smarmy but naturally smarmy. And I naturally go, smarmy. It's like it's like where have I seen this this Fabian guy before? Like it's it's such an unusual role for an actor. I, I don't think I've seen too often in anything. I haven't seen him in like anything. I I think he, apparently he did a horror movie called The Last Exorcism, and I vaguely remember seeing that. Oh, I might have seen that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. But I really I really don't. And apparently, I saw him in Friends once. <laughs> he should be in more shows, is, is, or in more movies, and more things. Is 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 is, yes. is what I'm saying. Much more. Things. Yeah, much more things. Speaking of things, what a thing this was, man! <laughs> what a this was fun. What an hour of podcasting, Matt. Uh, I think I think we Good stuff. I think we did it. So, hey, plugs. That's where we are. Before we wrap up, before we say goodbye, Matt, where can the people listening find you online? You can find me everywhere at the real Matt C. Literally everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No more needs to be said. That's about it. <laughs> That's it. I mean, y'all know me. You know what I do for a living. Yeah. Uh, yeah. T- stay tuned to uh, Monsters Never Die, the podcast I do with Jacob DeNoble. Uh, we just uh, recorded a very special episode. We have officially hit 200 movies discussed. Whoa. So, so Jacob and I went through... Uh, some of our favorites, some of the uh, surprises we've had a turnaround on. So that was fun. And then uh, in October, it's uh, the month of Myers. We're going to be talking every Halloween movie oh now that Halloween Ends God. is coming out. Oh so that's going to be fun. Maybe we'll have a guest. Who the hell knows? Uh, I am so excited. I, I've already committed to being a guest on uh, our sister show, um, Halloween h 40 uh, with uh-huh. Brandon Shane Mutella. I'm I because I was on their show last year for Halloween at uh, Kills, which I yes. loved. I I it, Halloween Kills was in my top ten last year. I I stand by that. That movie it's fun is incredible. Okay, so I'm galaxy galaxy brain idea to make Michael Myers the main character. I know. <laughs> but I am hyped for Halloween Ends. I'm excited. Same. I'm excited to hear your thoughts and Jacob's thoughts on it when it comes out because like it's it's my, it's one of my most anticipated of the year. I I I'm eager to see how it ends, like the title. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I also started my Halloween rewatch already. Like I I, I just Uh-oh. rewatched Halloween four uh, last week, and oh boy, oh boy, do I love that movie more now because of Halloween uh, Kills. It has <laughs> it has. That movie has like the best fall vibe uh, of any of the movies. I, it just feels like autumn. Uh, and and hey, man, aren't you excited for that new uh, uh, Scream Factory 4K box set of those random like three Halloween movies? <laughs> Are, aren't you excited? <laughs> Lord help me! I'm order it. I I already ordered mine. I cannot not have that set. Um, I'm gonna there's. Two movies in there that I'm going to watch a ton, and one that I'm probably never even going to take out of its case. 
Hey, I. Okay, listen. You're the one who likes that movie. I know. know. I know. But uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I should just make this promise now. Like, I want to talk about Halloween Resurrection with you, Matt. Like in depth. Maybe I can convince you to do like a commentary for uh, Halloween. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Come on. Not happening. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it off no. mic. Thank you, Matt. This was fun as always. Uh, well, where can we find you online? Oh, uh, 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 talkfilmsociety.com at talkfilmsoc. Okay, <laughs> patreon.com slash talkfilmsociety for bonuses for the Halloween Resurrection commentary. Me and Matt are, g- are going to do. <laughs> Check it out there. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. Uh, uh, great job for listening, everybody. Wait, why I say that? Okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is already off the rails. <laughs> great job, everyone. <laughs> great job, everyone. Thanks for listening. Uh, we and did it. <laughs> I'll see you at the movies. No one ever say that. All right, bye.